Let's not get in the uh, Thad singing uh, to start Jesus time. That'll decrease our Jesus time attendance a lot. Uh, hey, good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, and uh, just waiting to get our stream going here. Here we go. We're up and running. Short stuff, number one. Good job, Andrea. Flower Power, my teacher friend, good morning to you. Uh, Matt and Judy, good morning to you guys. Glad to hear your kitchen projects coming along. Miss Debbie, good morning to you. Tiana, all the way from the north frozen tundra land, good morning to you. Uh, Ann and Guy, good morning. Tracy, good morning. Annie, good morning. Uh, Randy, good morning to you. Uh, hopefully harvest wrapped up good and you're uh, buttoning stuff up and uh, switching gears. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Biles, good morning to you, brother. And uh, hopefully your wifey is feeling better. Rini, good morning to you, friend. Um, awesome to see you on here with us. Um, we've got all kinds of people jumping on here as always hey well we're, we're well if i can talk uh morning laurie uh while we're waiting for everybody to uh get logged in and joining us uh coffee cheers to you Alyssa. i agree um miss Susie uh on the west side good morning to you friend hey it is a fabulous day outside we got just slight movement of the leaves which means uh a very light wind. Uh, I know I'm super smart. Uh, beautiful blue skies. It's going to be back up in the high 80s today, pushing 90 tomorrow. It is. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So uh, looking forward to a beautiful day. Um, and uh, yeah, and really looking forward to our worship night tonight, uh, 6:30 at Daggy Hall. Uh, don't forget, come join us there. Uh, wear a mask, all that good stuff, or join us online. It'll be live streaming on our Facebook and YouTube, uh, rlcpullman.com. Uh, good morning, Tammy. Good to see you. Yeah, I shared some more Israel pics this morning uh, before Jesus' time. We're talking about uh, the uh, death and uh, burial today of Jesus, and so I shared uh, what is the most uh, probable two locations. One is, uh, has a church built around it now, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The picture I showed is essentially this crazy, insane shrine thing that they built around what would have been the tomb, um, and then there's a whole huge church built all the way around it. It's it's extremely extravagant and a bit overwhelming to go in there. Um, and then nearby there's the garden tomb. And uh, you can see pictures uh, that I shared there of the garden tomb and what it looks like inside the garden tomb. Um, a lot of people believe that's the actual site. I, I don't know. Um, but scholars say those are the top two choices. And so I shared some pictures of those to help you uh, have a frame of reference and kind of a visual uh, of what those look like today. So uh, Mich Michelle and Ryland, good morning to you. Uh, Jody, good morning. Good morning, Scott in uh, Missouri. Good to see you on here. Hey, Miss Judy out in Colfax. Good to see you. Uh, Tanya out in the big city of Palouse. Good to see you on here this morning. Make sure I didn't miss anybody. I don't think so. I think we got everybody that uh, is jumping on with us right now. Don't forget if you're watching and it's just in your newsfeed, click the video and then you'll pop in and get to see all the conversation going on uh, and join the uh, Jesus Time gang uh, rather than just watching from afar. So, all right. Hey, I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to dig into the text this morning and get rolling. So let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you so much for your word. We thank you for um, our friends that uh, gather together, that we can look forward to um, seeing each other through technology each morning, that we know there's going to be people um, that uh, are uh, joining us at the kitchen table, and that together uh, we uh, just uh, open your word and spend time in your word. And it, it helps, Lord, to have um, like-minded people um, looking forward to seeing each other to set time and place and uh, spur us on in our relationship with you. So uh, encourage these relationships. God, continue to give us um, influence with our friends and family uh, to share this and uh, share your word. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So here's where we go. 
We got uh, Luke chapter 23, finishing up 23 and starting 24. All right, so get the uh, magic help me see glasses on and we go like this. Luke 23, 44 says, by this time it was about noon and uh, remember yesterday we ended with him on the cross. Um, by this time it was about noon and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. And then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And these words he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Now, there was a good and righteous man named Joseph. He was a member of the Jewish high council, but he had not agreed with the decision and actions of the other religious leaders. He was from the town of Arimathea in Judea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then he took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in a long sheet of linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of rock. This was done late on Friday afternoon, the day of preparation, as the Sabbath was about to begin. As his body was taken away, the women from Galilee followed and saw the tomb where his body was placed. Then they went home and prepared spices and ointments to anoint his body. By the time they were there, uh, by the time they were finished, the Sabbath had begun, so they rested as required by the law. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling uh, robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his eleven disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who had told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. We'll kind of stop there for today. Um, so there's all kinds of cool stuff to unpack uh, from this um, uh, about the things that, like the, what Jesus said, it's his last words on the tomb, or on the tomb, on the cross, I'm sorry, uh, that I entrust you into my hands. And so there's that's a fun uh, rabbit trail to chase down to look at the psalm that he was quoting um, and to uh, learn a little bit about like what a, a death song was. Like this was Jesus really singing a worship song as his last breath, praising God. Um, that's kind of a fun nugget to chase down. Um, and then uh, the fact that this is kind of always a fun shout out like to the ladies, like, you know, Jesus... Uh, uh, the ladies are the first to appear that are first to see that he's gone. And then the ladies are also the first that he appears to, um, the guys have a hard time believing it at first. Like this is, this doesn't make sense. Right. And so there's, there's some fun stuff there. And this is one where it's neat to read, uh, some of the other gospel accounts, like read how Matthew recounts the story. And there's some different details and things that he includes, um, that Luke doesn't include. And so anyways, that's, it's a common story. Um, the thing that, as I was reading it this morning and just kind of praying and thinking about stuff, the thing that really stuck out to me is how um, the the disciples had a hard time believing the story. They had a hard time uh, wrapping their brain around what the ladies had told them. Like, hey, the, he's not there. He's alive. He's raised from the dead. There, it was sort of like, wait a minute, what? Um, it, and it, it it's one of those things where understanding the resurrection of Jesus and the fact that he conquered death um, is it's one of those things where you just wish you could have been there to see it to believe it because otherwise it's it's just not something that's uh, certainly not common and not something that most any of us have ever seen and so it's it's hard to wrap our brain around the fact that that's a real thing um, 
And so what it what it made me think about is just how important uh, our stories are, how important our testimony is uh, of God at work in us personally and in our lives, because um, we become the living evidence of a God that can change and transform, a God that can intervene, a God that shows up in your everyday mundane life and provides and cares. So like our, our, our lives and our interaction with God and how God shows up in our life becomes the evidence for some of these really hard to believe stories that if you, if you weren't there, if you didn't see it, it's hard to wrap your brain around it. And so when you say, Hey, I'm going to need you to, you're going to have to believe this one on faith, but I can tell you from my firsthand experience, here's examples of how I know God is real, where God has showed up in my life, how I'm a different person changed literally from the inside out. Like I am not who I used to be. Um, and, and it's not because of self-help books or it's not because of, um, you know, I just tried harder to be a different person. Uh, I care about things that I never would have cared about before. I care about people in a way I never would have cared about before. And, and that's not me becoming nicer. That's God at work in me. And, and then as we share stories about God intervening, um, it helps, it helps people see tangible evidence with people they know that God is real and at work. Um, and that builds on uh, the stories of the Bible that sometimes people have a hard time um, wrapping their brain around. So as we're thinking about the resurrection and how hard it was, I mean, here you got the guys that were there. They, they knew all the stuff. They knew all the stories. They knew the scriptures. They knew the prophecy. They knew what Jesus had told them firsthand. And, and here it comes to, to pass exactly like they said it was, and they struggle with it, right? So like, why would it be any different for so many of us and so many of our friends to struggle with the fact that Jesus conquered death. Um, so I just think it's important to remember to share your stories. I think a lot of times we uh, experience God in our lives, God at work in our everyday life, and it's sort of like, a, man, that was really neat, right? Like that's uh, that uh, that was awesome and it was amazing. It builds our faith. But are we sharing those stories? Who are we telling? Uh, our God stories too about um, God showing up and intervening in our life. So um, I would love to um, share some some uh, God at work stories. And um, I actually this is me just being chasing a rabbit trail and being spontaneous. But I think next week, uh, since we've got a short week uh, after Labor Day and we're going to bump down to the 7 a.m., what I'm thinking we'll do is I would like to. Um, get some uh, stories from you guys. And so what I would love is for you to just uh, um, share some stories with me. If you're comfortable being on camera with me, um, there's uh, a way to share uh, a Facebook Live and bring you on screen with me. And so I've never done it, but um, hey, uh, I'm up for trying new stuff. So I think it would be fun. I'll share some stories next week. Why don't we take the short week next week and for our Jesus time before we launch into something new, let's do some personal stories. Let's share some stories of how has Jesus time impacted you? What is this? How, is, how has God showed up in your life through Jesus time, through the connections here in the word? How has God showed up in your life in the past? If you've got uh, a testimony, a story that you'd like to share, let me know. Um, shoot me a message um, and let's communicate between now and then and then I'll try and get some of y'all uh, lined up and ready to go so that uh, um, some of our uh, mornings next week there'll be some other folks involved besides just uh, myself uh, for Jesus time. Um, and yes, uh, Judy's asking, can you share off camera? Yeah, you could. You can uh, message me a story. Um, and then I could relay the story or look for other ways to help share the story um, uh, via technology. So that's uh, that's an option too. You don't have to be on camera. Um, so if you've got a story um, of God at work uh, that you could kind of testify that hey, this is one of this is one of my reasons I know God is real because of this instance or this time when I was in need and He showed up or how uh, you know like the bills were piling up and provision came in like it it was a direct answer to prayer like it. What are the things that have helped you know God is real? And then also about Jesus time like how has this 
impacted your life? How has this changed your relationship with the Lord? How is this being a part of Jesus time um, and digging into the word every morning? Is it, um, has this been something that you feel like is God at work, right? And, and so anyways, share some of those stories. So be thinking about that. We're going to finish Luke uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. Um, and then we'll come back on Tuesday after Labor Day. And then don't forget, we're going to, uh, we're going to, um, uh, start early, uh, that Tuesday after Labor Day, we're going to bump down to 7 AM, uh, after Labor Day. And we'll stay at 7 AM to make it a little easier for more people to join us live before work and school and all that stuff. So, um, looking forward to hearing from a bunch of you with your story. So, all right, let's do this. Let's say goodbye to a bunch of folks. Janice, good to see you, friend. I haven't seen you for a long time. I miss you. Um, Janice is an awesome lady here in our church and helps with uh, blessing beds, and uh, I miss you. So thanks for joining us this morning. Good to see you. Um, Eli uh, Bachmeyer, I don't think I know you, Eli. So Eli, let us know. Where are you watching from? How'd you find us? Uh, good morning, Julie. Good morning, Christina. Good to see you. Uh, John uh, Groover Jr. Uh, John, again, I think you're new and I don't re recall seeing you on here possibly, but give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, Roger and Gina Branscombe. I don't know which one of you it is. Maybe it's both of you. Good morning to you guys. Some uh, old Bonners Ferry folks. Uh, it's awesome to have you on here with us this morning. Vickermans, good morning. Mr. Mills, my friend, Big Tom. Good to see you, brother. Uh, I love you. I miss you. I know all of my units of lumber are still at your house. I haven't forgotten. Uh, I will figure out how to get them here someday once I need them. We'll talk later. Uh, Journey, good morning, brother. Uh, Cheryl and Randy, good morning to the two of you. Linda, I missed you. Good morning, Linda. Uh, Susan Kirby, good morning to you. I don't know who you are. I know some Kirby's in Bonners Ferry. I don't know if you're a Bonners Ferry Kirby, but Susan, let us know who you are. Um, so anyways, lots of folks on here this morning. It's good to see everybody. I am going to uh, pray for us and pray for our worship night tonight. I'm excited to see a bunch of you there with us in person and with us uh, virtually on the live stream. And those of you that uh, do Jesus Time, when you're on the live stream watching on Facebook tonight, do your thing, comment, help connect to new people because y'all are used to commenting and talking and kind of relating to each other and you guys do awesome at it. Help us be uh, the virtual welcome team um, and you guys just make anybody that shows up on the live stream feel like this is a church full of people that is excited to see more people. So, and uh, make feel, people feel welcome. All right, let me pray. God, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thanks for... Um, Thanks for your son. Thanks for, um, Lord, for the resurrection, uh, Lord, that you conquered death and that in that we can uh, trust that uh, the same is available to us uh, as we put our faith in your son. Um, God, stir our hearts and, and really just call to our minds times where you have really revealed yourself to us, where you've intervened in our lives, where you have been real and powerful and help us to share those stories so that we can be uh, living testimonies, living evidence that you are real and uh, help other people um, have uh, a tangible way to get to know you and see that you're real um, uh, and to grow their uh, baby faith. And so we just pray all these things in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Mr. Ron, I didn't catch you on there. Good morning, Ron. Ben Clark, good morning to you. Good to see you on here, brother. Uh, miss you. Hope to see you and your wife at the worship night tonight. Y'all have a fabulous day. I am off and running. See ya. Bye.